The history of Irish travellers is marked by centuries of persecution and systemic injustice, reflecting both societal prejudice and institutional neglect. This nomadic group, with a distinct culture and way of life, has long been marginalised and maligned by settled populations. Such discrimination is deeply ingrained, stemming not just from cultural misunderstandings, but also deliberate efforts to erase traveller identity. From the mid-19th century, travellers began to face legal and societal pressures aimed at forcing assimilation. Policies were designed to undermine their traditional way of life, including the destruction of their campsites and the denial of access to resources like education, healthcare and stable housing. One of the most infamous examples is the 1963 Commission on Itinerancy, established by the Irish government. It framed traveller culture as a problem to be eradicated, aiming to integrate them into mainstream society at the expense of their nomadic traditions. Travellers were often pushed to the fringes of society, both geographically and socially. Traditional halting sites were destroyed, forcing families to live in unsafe conditions, often without access to clean water or sanitation. Displacement not only disrupted their livelihoods, but also severed their connections to long-held traditions and community networks. These tactics plunged many travellers into poverty, reinforcing harmful stereotypes that cast them as burdens on society. Media portrayals further deepened public hostility. Travellers were frequently depicted as criminals or nuisances, perpetuating stigma and justifying their exclusion from mainstream society. This prejudice was compounded by institutional failings, including discriminatory education systems and inadequate healthcare services, leading to stark disparities in literacy, life expectancy and employment rates. Even today, many travellers encounter barriers to social inclusion. High rates of unemployment and homelessness reflect a society that continues to marginalise them. However, in recent years, there has been a growing awareness of the injustices they face. Community-led activism, coupled with legal recognition as a distinct ethnic group, has sparked hope for more equitable treatment and preservation of traveller culture. Yet, the road to systemic change remains steep, requiring a collective reckoning with the prejudices of past and present. The origins of the Irish travellers are deeply tied to both historical and genetic narratives, forming an intriguing chapter in Ireland's cultural heritage. For centuries, their emergence as a distinct group has been the subject of debate veiled in oral tradition and historical ambiguity. However, modern research is shedding light on their unique story, tracing their roots back over a millennium. Historical accounts suggest that nomadic communities have been a feature of Irish society since at least the medieval period. Often referred to as tinkers or itinerants, their presence was noted in early records, but their exact origins remained unclear. Some historians argue that Irish travellers may have adopted their mobile lifestyle in response to social and political upheavals. Events such as the Anglo-Norman invasion of the 12th century, the confiscation of Gaelic lands, and the Cromwellian conquest forced many Irish families into poverty and displacement. It's theorised that some of these displaced groups embraced a nomadic existence for survival, developing distinct cultural traits through generations of marginalisation. Genetic studies have bolstered the historical narrative, uncovering evidence that travellers are not a separate ethnic group, but rather a branch of the Irish population that split from settled communities. A landmark study by the Royal College of Surgeons in 2017 estimated this divergence as occurring between 700 and 1,200 years ago, firmly placing the origin of travellers before the early modern period. This genetic split correlates with periods of large-scale upheaval in Irish history, suggesting systemic disruption as a possible trigger. Fascinatingly, while Irish travellers share many genetic markers with the settled Irish, their population is more genetically homogenous, reflecting centuries of endogamy within the traveller community. Additionally, oral traditions provide a complementary perspective. Among the travellers, there are stories of descent from landless Gaelic nobility, families who lost everything during colonial conflicts, and even noble families reduced to itinerancy after wars and betrayals. These narratives speak to the complex intersection between ancestry, culture and history that defines the traveller's identity. Why chromosome analysis offers key insights into the paternal history of travellers. The predominant Y chromosome haplogroup found among Irish males, including travellers, is R1b, which is prevalent across Western Europe and reflects deep ancestral ties to Celtic populations. On the maternal side, mitochondrial DNA data reveal a similar story. Irish traveller maternal lineages are dominated by haplogroups H and U, 
which are characteristic of Western Europe and particularly common in the Irish settled population. Again, the genetic variation within these haplogroups is lower among travellers, reflecting historical isolation and a closed community structure. Autozygosity, or the presence of long stretches of identical gene copies inherited from a common ancestor, is significantly higher in travellers compared to the settled population. This is indicative of both long-term genetic bottlenecks and the impact of consanguinity. These factors also lead to increased incidence rates of recessive genetic conditions within traveller communities. Interestingly, studies find very little genetic admixture from non-Irish groups in traveller DNA, distinguishing them sharply from other European nomadic populations, such as the Roma. This reinforces their origins as an indigenous Irish group that developed a distinct cultural identity while remaining genetically rooted in Ireland. The language of the Irish travellers, known as Shelta or Cant, is a linguistic relic that embodies the group's cultural independence and resilience. Its origins are a fascinating blend of history and necessity. Linguists trace Shelta back to at least the 18th century, though its roots likely extend further into Irish history. It is a mixed language, drawing heavily on Old and Middle Irish for vocabulary, with structural and grammatical influence from Hiberno-English. Over centuries, Roma and even Hebrew linguistic elements seeped into its lexicon, creating a rich tapestry of sounds and expressions. Shelta is not merely a language, it is a cultural shield. For travellers, it served a crucial role in maintaining privacy and safeguarding their community from outsiders who often sought to oppress or exploit them. This secretive function is one of Shelta's defining traits. Words and meanings are often cryptic, with many terms derived from Irish roots that have been altered phonetically to obscure their origins. For example, the shelter word for woman, leoc, can be traced to the Irish word kailin, but its transformation intentionally complicates understanding for outsiders. Structurally, shelter applies a variety of word formation techniques, including inversion and metathesis. Grammatical conventions largely align with English, suggesting that its speakers were already bilingual by the time the language solidified in its current form. This dual lingualism underscores the traveller's ability to adapt while preserving distinct cultural markers. Irish travellers have vibrant religious and cultural beliefs that set their community apart within broader Irish society. Rooted predominantly in Roman Catholicism, their spirituality incorporates distinct layers of traditional folk practices, reflecting centuries of cultural evolution. Catholic traditions hold a strong place in traveller society. Baptisms, weddings and funerals are marked by elaborate ceremonies, often more ornate than those in settled Irish communities. These rites serve as both spiritual milestones and social gatherings, reinforcing familial and communal bonds. The Virgin Mary enjoys a special reverence, serving as a symbol of purity and protection. Items like medals and rosaries are carried as both religious tokens and talismans, emblematic of the deep intersection between faith and cultural identity. However, what truly distinguishes the spiritual practices of travellers is their ongoing relationship with folk beliefs. Many travellers hold traditional views alongside Catholic doctrine. Fairies, curses and protective charms are woven into everyday life, a legacy of Ireland's ancient folklore. Holy wells are another focal point of their spirituality. Pilgrimages to these sacred sites, where prayers and rituals for health and protection are performed, remain a key part of their religious practice. These wells symbolically link Catholic saints with pre-Christian deities, blending two spiritual traditions seamlessly. Another unique aspect is the role of healers within the community. Traditional cures, composed of whispered prayers, herbal remedies and blessings, are respected forms of medicine among travellers. These practices are often sought for ailments seen as spiritual in nature, highlighting the blurred line between health and faith. Marriage and traveller culture also hold strong religious significance, Often arranged between families, couples rarely divorce, and unions are deeply celebrated as a continuation of faith and family. Extended family structures play a central role in passing down religious and cultural traditions, shaping the younger generation's worldview. Though modern influences increasingly shape their lives, Irish travellers remain deeply connected to this dual spiritual identity. Their beliefs, an intricate blend of Roman Catholicism and ancestral folklore, continue to serve as a source of resilience and cultural pride in an evolving world. Irish travellers have long been known for their resourcefulness and adaptability, with economic practices rooted in centuries-old traditions. Historically, their occupations revolved around mobility and skilled craftsmanship, reflecting a deep connection to the needs of rural Irish communities. 
these roles not only sustained their livelihoods, but also fostered a distinct cultural identity. One of the most iconic trades associated with travellers is tinsmithing. From the 17th century onward, their families travelled the countryside, repairing pots, pans and kettles. Their expertise in metalwork allowed them to create functional tools and utensils for local households, a service that earned them both income and a reputation as skilled artisans. Similarly, horse trading became another pillar of traveller life. Renowned for their deep knowledge of horses, travellers often bought, trained and sold them in markets across Ireland, where their reputation for fair dealings was widely regarded. Seasonal agricultural labour also played a central role. Travellers provided crucial services, such as harvesting crops or mending farm equipment, which integrated them into local agricultural economies. Other occupations included hawking and peddling, where travellers would sell goods like textiles, household items and handmade wares to rural communities. This mobility meant that travellers could offer goods and services to areas that were often underserved. However, as Ireland modernised, many traditional traveller trades declined. Mechanisation reduced the demand for tinsmiths and agricultural labourers, while supermarkets and commercial suppliers rendered hawking less viable. Additionally, societal prejudice often created barriers to stable employment outside of their traditional roles. The housing and living conditions of Irish travellers reflect a complex interplay of tradition, adaptation and external pressures. Historically, travellers maintained a nomadic lifestyle, travelling in horse-drawn wagons and later motor caravans. This mobility was a core part of their identity, allowing them to engage in seasonal work and sustain their community bonds. Traveller caravans were often parked on common lands or roadsides, creating small, tight-knit encampments where families lived collectively. However, the shift from a predominantly rural society to a more urbanised Ireland significantly impacted this way of life. Laws passed during the mid-20th century began imposing restrictions on nomadism. Local authorities erected barriers, such as prohibiting roadside halting, to discourage transient living. The introduction of legislation like the Housing Miscellaneous Provisions Act made it increasingly difficult for travellers to maintain their traditional mobility. This legislation, combined with societal prejudice, forced many families into stagnant halting sites or permanent housing, often at the margins of towns and cities. Contemporary living conditions for travellers are frequently inadequate. Many halting sites lack access to basic necessities, such as running water, electricity and waste disposal, leading to poor sanitation and health risks. Overcrowding is also common, with several generations often living within the confines of one caravan or small dwelling. These conditions contribute to the community's higher rates of health issues compared to the settled population, including chronic illnesses and shorter life expectancies. Irish travellers also made their way to the United States, particularly during the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Cities like Boston, New York and Chicago, which already had strong Irish immigrant communities, became focal points for traveller settlements. For many, the US presented not just economic opportunities, but a chance to rebuild lives with less persecution. Smaller traveller communities have since emerged in Canada and Australia, where Irish migration streams historically extended. Despite dispersing across the globe, Irish travellers have remained distinct in their cultural practices. They continue to preserve their language, shelta, along with traditions like specific forms of storytelling, music and crafts. However, adaptation to new environments has necessitated some changes. For instance, in urban areas of the US and the UK, traveller communities have adopted more sedentary living arrangements, though they often sustain close-knit ties through family networks and community gatherings. One of the most prominent Irish traveller figures is Tyson Fury, a world-famous professional boxer and two-time heavyweight champion. Born into a traveller family in Manchester, Fury proudly identifies with his heritage, often referring to himself as the Gypsy King. His achievements in boxing, including defeating Vladimir Klitschko and Deontay Wilder, have catapulted him to global fame. Fury's openness about his struggles with mental health has also made a powerful impact, helping to destigmatize mental health issues both within and outside the traveller community. He embodies grit and resilience, traits deeply rooted in traveller culture. Another noteworthy personality is Paddy Doherty, who gained recognition through the television show Big Fat Gypsy Weddings and later won Celebrity Big Brother. Doherty used his fame to shed light on traveller traditions while advocating for greater understanding and acceptance of the community. His candid demeanour and pride in his roots made him a relatable and influential voice in popular culture. Nan Joyce, a pioneer in activism, 
holds a unique place in Irish history. The first traveller woman to run for Irish Parliament in the 1980s, Joyce was a tireless advocate for equality, housing rights and education for travellers. Her courage and determination challenged systemic discrimination and paved the way for future generations of traveller activists. Musician Pecker Dunn, known as the troubadour of the travelling people, was another celebrated figure. His folk songs captured the essence of traveller life with heartfelt lyrics and traditional melodies. These individuals, among others, have used their platforms to break boundaries and challenge misconceptions about the traveller community, empowering travellers to live proudly in both worlds, modern society and their traditional culture is vital to ensuring that their heritage is not only remembered, but celebrated. While the road ahead is fraught with challenges, the resilience of the traveller community continues to inspire hope for a more inclusive future.